In this second video on dates and times, we're going to look at some other functions and how we can do calculations with dates in Delphi. So, first of all, there's a function called an is a leap year function. It's a Boolean function. And basically, what you do is you give it an integer value and that represents the year. So, you could say 2020 or 2021 is the value that goes into that function. And because it's a Boolean function, it returns a true or a false. Well, it turns true if that value that you've just given that year is a leap year and it returns false if that year is not a leap year. So, example, you could use an if statement. So, you could say if is leap year 2020 is true, then you know that you can show the message that February of 2020 has 29 days. And if it wasn't, then you could say that it has 28 days because that's one of the key differences about a leap year is the number of days in February. So, there is the is leap year Boolean function. You don't have to calculate it. Um, so no, another one we can do is calculations with that. How do we do like calculations? Um, so there's three main ones that we can look at. The first one, the most commonly used one, is when we subtract two dates. The answer will be the number of days between those two dates. So, it, so if you minus two dates, it'll always be the number of days. If you want to convert it to months or years, you're going to have to use some sort of mathematical. So for example, if you want to say how many years there are between two dates, you can subtract them to get the number of days, then you would divide them by 365.25 if you wanted to get there. That's the correct value. So let's say we've got the date set to the first of the first 2000, and we wanted to find that how many days there are between that date and today. Then you would use a, the date function. Remember, we learned that in the first video, which gives the current date, and we would minus the the earlier date because obviously today would be a bigger value than the date in 2000 and then that would return the number of days now I just want you to take note that R and num we just displaying that that will be storing that value into a variable it display it stores it into a real value so just remember it's not an integer it's a real value so if you want it as an integer you'll have to do a round or a, a trunk or something like that to be able to convert it to an integer if you want to use it as an integer but it will be a real answer so that's the one thing that you can do. Now, the other calculation that you can do is if you just take an integer and you add it onto a date, and that will add that many days. So if I take the date, which is today's date, and I just plus 10, and let's pretend that this video was being done yesterday on the 13th of the 3rd of March. If I said the date plus 10, then it would take that date and add 10 days to it, which would then be stored into D temp another date time variable and that value would end up being 10 days time which would be the 23rd of the third 2021 so there we go so it's 10 days later and the same can be done if you subtract an integer so it just goes back that many days so if i take today's date and i'm minus 20 and let's pretend again that we were doing this yesterday on the 13th of march let's say, pretend that that was happening um, then if we minus 20 now we can't go back after 13 we can't go into negative days so what the, the Delphi will do it'll work out 13 days back and then seven days into the previous month which would have been February so that's why when we get the answer into the D temp variable you'll see that the answer is basically the 21st of February which is seven days further back because it's the 13 days of this month and then the seven days into the previous month so it will do all that calculation for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So there we go. So those how you that's how you do your calculations using date functions and dates. So let's try out those calculations. So there I've got two dates. I've got the current date, which is the day today, which is the 14th of March. And then I've got, I'm encoding the end of this year, the last day of the year, which is the 31st of December. And so I want to find out how many days there are left in the year. So then I can say, well, I'm going to take that, the, the later date. In this case, the later date would be D temp. Because that's going to be the bigger number minus the current time, the current date. And we're going to store that. Now, remember, I told you it stores into a real number. And I've got a real value there called R value. R value is equal to this. So we can do that. Boom. And then we want to display it. So I'm going to say show message. And we're going to show our value but we're going to convert it from what it is a float to what we want it to become a string so there we go let's just do that Boom. so if i do that we can see it 
So even though it's a real number, it's displayed as an integer. So there are 292 days left of the year, according to this video, from, from when this video was done. And just to sh prove to you that I'm not lying about the, the real value, if you do that, it says AA, it needs to be an integer and extended. So that's why it's important that you have a real value for that. And the other thing that we can do, if we've got these two dates, let's say we take today's uh, date. We're going to say, I've got a D temp. I'm going to make another date variable D next. And I'm going to say D next equals to whatever the current date is. So date or D current, let's use D current because we've got it on a read. And it's plus 50 days onto D current. And then we want to display D next, but D next is a, is a date. So we want to say date to string like we learned in the previous video. So if we add 50 days to today's date, where, what will that be? Well, if I display it, boom, well, there you can see it'll be the 3rd of May. It will be 50 days time from the date of this video. And if I minus 100 days, then I can see how, how, what was the day 100 days ago? It was the 4th of December, 2020. So that's how we can do calculations to dates. Now the next function I'm going to show you, they aren't really, you can't really use them straight away in Delphi. You have to add the date utils library at the top. If you add that at the top, then you have access to the following functions. So there's a whole bunch of extra ones. And the first one I'm going to show you, let's say we've got an integer variable. There is a year of function, which takes a date and will return just the year value of that date. So if it was today, it would end up returning 2021. So that's a nice way of just getting the particular value from a date of the year um, and there's also a month of and a day of and as you guessed you can get the the actual year of a particular day date uh, the month of a particular date or a day of a particular date so you can use those 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 return integer values and they are all part of date utils the other type of function that you can get there is another one called days in a month and this function will take in two parameters it takes in a year value as an integer and it takes a month value as an integer and then it tells you how many days there are in that month. So, for example, if it was January, it would be 31. If it was um, April, it would be 30, that type of thing. Um, the reason why you have to give the year, you might say, but why do we need the year? Well, the reason why you need to give the year is because in the event that you ask for the how many days there are in February, you need to also specify which year it is. And so it can work out if it's 28 or 29. So that's the reason why you have to give the year for days in a month. And that returns a number. So that's the total number of days in that month. Um, so there's an example. If you gave three, um, which is the month of March in 2021, it would return a value of 31 because there are 31 days in March. Now, um, there is another one called days in a month. And you might go, that's the same one. No, it's not. It's not the same. Why? Because there is no A in this one. The other one was days in a month. And this one is days in month. And this one just takes a date as a parameter. So you don't have to worry about two values. It just takes in the date. And because you give it a date, it's already got the month and the year. So I can straight away work out what is the actual um, the, the actual number of days. So remember that it takes in a T date. And so if we gave it, for example, if we said D temp was the 13th of March 2021 and we converted it to a date and then we gave it to this days in month function, it would then it would, store, it would give us the value of 31 again, because that's how many days there are in that month. Another function that we can use and it also uses an integer for its answer is the days between function. If you give it two dates, it will return the number of days between those two dates. Now you might say, but well, we just did this with the calculations, we can just minus them. Yes, you can. That would do the exact same thing. Um, except for this one, the result gets stored into an integer, if that makes any difference for you. That can help you. So that's the one advantage. But the other advantage about the days between is that you, the, it returns integer, as I said. But the other advantage is that there, there's also a months between and there's a years between function. So if you want to work out how many months there are between two dates or how many years there are between two dates, um, you can use this function, which is really great, which is something you can use calculations so let's go back to our previous examples I'm gonna take that out let's try the, the 
if I go on uh, num and now I say days between now you see days between is got red under it so that means we've got to go to the top and we've got to add the date utils function and if I'll scroll back down oh now we can use it and I'm going to give it two dates I'm going to give it the the date there and I'm going to give it the current date there we go so and then we will I don't want this anymore I want to display that number show message I want to show our num but what is it oh well, that's going to be an int to a string so that way I can see how many days there are between those two so there's the days between function boom and there you can see it still says 292 um, and if I set the months between months between it would say there how many months so today's March and we want to get to 12 so there are nine months between today's month to end the month at the end of the year so there we go there's all those functions you can test them all out a little tip if you want to use the date utils function this is a little tip that I do. if you not, don't always remember the functions that are in the date utils um, what you can do is a little trickier you can type in date utils here followed by a dot and then you have all the, all the vet all the stuff in the date utils there we go there we go all of them so you can go look at them ah oh, there we go there's is is valid date is in leap year there's lots of functions available there days in a year days in month remember we spoke about that days in month days in a month all of those there's today there's even a yesterday function which will return yesterday's value or tomorrow's uh, value um, if it is today there's tons of these you can go look through them um, if you so if you forget you can always go look over here to see what they are and you can go find them and they can hopefully help you so there we go there's some funky functions with dates and times for more videos in this video series, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, we'd love to hear from you, leave a comment, um, tell us what you like, tell us how we can improve, we'd love to hear from you, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.